welcome back to Kingdom Reviews. I'm your host, Future Key Bearer, and today we begin our look at the next game in the series, Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. What? Yeah, I'll be honest, it was quite the debate for me whether to go with this or KH2, seeing as how this game comes first chronologically, but Kingdom Hearts 2 was released first. Hell, I was almost going to go with KH2, given how much stuff from that game appears in this one. But the prevailing argument came from the HD collections. In those, 358 is presented first, so that's what we're going with. Speaking of which, yes, for the sake of quality, I will be using footage from the PS3 version for most of the cutscenes. Released in 2009 on the Nintendo DS, many consider this the worst game in the franchise. I don't know about that, but it definitely has the weirdest title in the franchise. Well, okay, the title itself isn't really that bad. It's pronounced 358 Days Over 2, which makes sense seeing as how the game's story takes place over the course of 358 days and centers around two characters. Hell, given the subtitles that a lot of the games in the series have, this one is one of the most straightforward in terms of what it means to the plot. The problem is how it's written. I mean, look at that logo! There are too many things that that could mean, like 358 divided by two days, or 358 half days. The point of the matter is, this title isn't represented in a way that anyone can actually figure out what it's supposed to say. Alright, let's get into the actual game. After the opening sequence, where we're introduced to the members of the organization spoken of in Chain of Memories, known as Organization 13, we start off on Day 255. Wow, we're two-thirds through the game already? On top of a clock tower, we see our protagonist, Roxas. Who is Roxas? We'll get into that eventually. You're early. No, you're just late. A wizard is never late. So, you got the number memorized, do you? Yeah. Have to hang on to something, right? It's not like I have memories from before the organization. Something odd that I realized about the DS version is that there are quite a few instances where the subtitles don't match the dialogue. It's not that big a deal, I just don't understand why. Don't you remember? I acted like a zombie. Right, that first week you could barely form a sentence. But come on, you're still kind of a zombie. If you replace brains with hearts, then kinda yeah. Hey, Roxas. Bet you don't know why the sun sets red. You see, light is made up of lots of colors. And out of all those colors, red is the one that travels the farthest. The sun knew this, of course, and wanted to extend its reach as far and as long as possible. Seriously, where is she? I get the feeling you ask that a lot on blind dates. Hey -o! Then Axel gives a look like he knows something, because of course he does. After that, the day counter here, whoa, Nelly! Roll back to back to the dawn of time when the earth was smoking and the lava flowed. We see a giant castle in the sky, and we enter what is known as the round room. Because the round table was already taken, and they didn't want everyone to associate this room with pizza anyway. The leader of the group, Zemnis, and because I know people are going to bring it up, yes, you can rearrange the letters in his name to spell man-sex. Ha ha, how humorous, let's never bring it up again. Xemnas introduces the organization to their newest member, number 14, named Xion. And we move on to the next day. Did that introduction take up a whole day? Anyway, the next day, Roxas is assigned to go with Axel into the field so he can learn the ropes. But not before Xion catches his attention. And how about our boss's name, huh? Xemnas. No way you're gonna forget his name, right? And everyone who's played KH2 gives a disgruntled chuckle. So Axel takes Roxas to Twilight Town. You know, that world that Sora didn't recognize but was in his memory for some reason? Anyway, here's where we get our first bit of tutorials about how the game is played. We get the basic controls and learn that this game is less about exploring the worlds and more about completing specific missions. Hell, most of the time you're confined to one area. After the two are done, Axel decides to take Roxas for some icing on the cake, as it were. That, of course, is going up to the clock tower and enjoying some sea salt ice cream. A frozen treat that the Kingdom Hearts series makes out to be the most delicious thing in existence that every fan wants to try, and yet the only source of it is at Tokyo Disney Sea. Well, here you are, finally out in the field working for the organization, right? For the organization. You might even say that today is where it all really begins for you. So we have no need to go into Roxas' first few days. The next day, Roxas is sent out with Marluxia. This is currently taking place before Chain of Memories. Here we learn that there are two breeds of Heartless, 
Pure Bloods and Emblems. The difference is that Emblem Heartless release captive hearts when defeated, and Pure Bloods do not. A detail that, if you were paying attention, was actually in the games as early as Cage 1. It just was never really important until now. Marluxia tells Roxas that when Emblem Heartless are defeated with his Keyblade, the released hearts get captured, and go towards making the great entity known as Kingdom Hearts. Now, some of you may be wondering how the hell that works, especially considering how Kingdom Hearts was presented in the first game. To that I say... And this begs the question why the organization wants Kingdom Hearts to begin with. Well, Roxas learns that very thing the next day when he's partnered with Zexion. After we learn about how some missions have stretch goals, as it were, Zexion explains their plans for Kingdom Hearts. See, when people turn into Heartless, their hearts leave their bodies and become the Dark Creatures. When someone with a particularly strong heart turns into a Heartless, the body that is left behind acts with a will of its own. This is what's referred to as a Nobody, with a capital N. And that is what all of the organization's members are. Nobodies. And now, every mention of being Nobody in Chain of Memories makes a whole lot more sense. Sort of. And so, the organization wants Kingdom Hearts because they believe that it will give them the hearts that they lack. So, in short, most breeds of Heartless actually have hearts, and the Nobodies are Heartless, just not THE Heartless. What? The next day, Roxas is partnered with Larxene, who's already left without him. Bitch. This is where we learn about panels. This grid is where you equip everything. Your spells, items, accessories, weapons, even your levels. These are the building blocks for your character, and you have to learn how to best manage it and be prepared for your next mission. Larxene's tutorial is about learning magic, and she's a total bitch about it the entire time. Even Roxas seems to acknowledge it. A new day arrives, and Vexen teaches Roxas about recon missions, and is an ass about it. He's not as bad as Larxene in this regard, but to be fair, no one is. The following day, Lexius teaches Roxas about limit breaks. Basically, when your health gets low, you can hold down the attack button and unleash a devastating attack. However, you can't very well try it out with full health, so... And that's most of the tutorials. But you want to know the biggest thing that I learned? Most of the organization members are kind of dicks. Hopefully next time, Roxas will be able to catch a break.